Thank you. First of all, thank you very much for being here, and thank you to the organizers and ADHO for allowing us to, for allowing me to present at this conference and wonderful event. Today, I'm going to talk about my PhD project and dissertation. And uh, well, I, I'm almost PhD. I'm going to defend my thesis in a couple of weeks. And uh, the focus of my work is uh, the multimodal, multisemiotic analysis of digital tourism strategies. Um, so in this presentation, I will briefly introduce the, the framework of digital humanities and uh, apply to communication. So I will talk about why I think the integration and combination of uh, these two fields is very uh, fruitful. Then I will introduce my research objectives, the theoretical framework I developed, and moving on then to the research designs and methods, including the tools that I developed to carry out my study. And finally, I will provide some insights into the results and some uh, conclusions. So first of all, why did I decide to focus on communication and, uh, dis and tourism discourse? Okay? Um, I think we all agree, and at least media scholars agree on the fact that uh, we are witnessing a pervasive and sometimes perhaps uncontrolled information spreading on the internet and on social media. And this without critical, adequate critical skills can lead to uh, the internalization of partial views as absolute truths and uh, without challenging or resistance to them. And this obviously perpetuates inequalities and power dynamics in the case of tourism discourse for profit purposes. So the, we could say the task as a, a systemic functional linguist and multimodal analyst set out to carry out is to provide some insights, some scientific and reliable insights into how these kind of narratives work are constructed through categorization and systematization of resources. Think about communication in today's society. So where is language? What is the role of visual means? So the question today is not only how is, how is language constructed, but how, is vi how are visual means uh, constructed means of communication in multimodality modes. So um, the questions uh, I asked myself when developing the project uh, were, were, how can we analyze the meaning of images? How are worldviews framed visually and linguistically? Because multimodality deals with both language and other modes, in my case, static imagery. How are attitudes and emotions conveyed to the audience and for which purposes? And finally, what is the role and function of imagery and language in the digital sphere? This applied again to tourism narratives, the, main, uh, the focus of my work. And so also consumerist discourse. In my, I, I believe that digital humanities and empirical multimodality share the same epistemic stance. So the idea that to access to knowledge and uh, some um, informed knowledge of pra about practices, we need to adopt hard sciences methods. So um, for, we, for what purpose? For reproducibility and the reliability uh, and generalization of results, but also to answer new questions that can arise from data annotation. And that is actually what happened to me. Um, so well, a challenge that I had to face while developing my project was to um, try to uh, adapt a qualitative model to quantitative research and a qualitative model based on linguistics. Okay, so uh, what I needed to do is to analyze bodies of data as large as possible, but also to adapt the pre-established and pre uh, uh, yeah, pre-established assumptions and knowledge to uh, uh, the generic and discourse specificity, so the context that I was working in and the data under investigation, with the final aim of testing hypotheses and validating theories that already uh, exist. So I like to think of my work as a research product that can be applied uh, to potentially and hopefully many, many fields or many contexts of research. My work is, could be defined as an empirical and critical framework for the classification of visual and linguistic features and the validation of theories. Through uh, theory-based but data-driven categorizations that lead to quantification and measurement of uh, strategies or uh, features and consequently testing of uh, theories uh, empirically and statistically. 
So my project is uh, the following, so my thesis as well. I will not be able to delve into the discussion of all the details, but I, I think this visualization, visualization aid might be interesting and spark your interest in my work, so uh, feel free to ask me questions or provide feedback uh, later also. Um, as you can see here, the objectives of my work uh, are two. So the first one, I wanted to explore whether multimodal tourism strategies were constructed systematically to manipulate individuals' perception of and attitudes towards tourism destinations, and to investigate how multimodal narratives vary according to the channel of dissemination. So in the realm of marketing studies and sociology uh, as well. And my hypothesis, again, building on uh, marketing, is that discourse specialists, depending on the platform, uh, construct uh, different views of the travel experiences and convey different attitudes, depending on the audience and also they are uh, speaking with. So these are the data I've investigated, some examples, obviously. On the left, you see Instagram posts of travel boards, and on the right, website, uh, blog posts, and communication. So I wanted to make sense of this and analyze the different strategies present in both uh, language and images, and also they analyze the interconnections between them. How does this create meaning, and how, why could this be, uh, why is this effective and persuasive? My theoretical framework is multidisciplinary, uh, as it is a digital humanities studies, which digital humanities acknowledges the complexity of phenomena. And this is why I found in digital, digital humanities, uh, we could say, a very helpful framework to carry out my multimodal study. Uh, mainly, it, focus, it, it is based on systemic functional linguistics, the theory upon which um, multimodality is based. So the idea that uh, uh, language is, uh, uh, has a function, plays a function, and a role in context to achieve particular communicative goals, and that language is not the only mean to, means to uh, communicate and, uh, and create meaning. Also, there is the grammar visual design, which is the theory of multimodality applied to static imagery, tourism, discourse, and sociology, and obviously media studies. So what I ask myself uh, is, uh, how are choices about of events, participants, and settings, both in images and in language, um, are, uh, how are these uh, entities uh, chosen in order to construe a particular meaning of experience, how the tourist experience is constructed overall, what are the emotions and the power relationships constructed through shots, angles, adjectives, nouns, verbs, and what is the overall composition of the images, language and the uh, multimodal orchestration of the message. And in the tourism discourse, this kind of multi-layered meaning potential is realized to create a sense of authenticity, extraordinariness and unknown, natural recharging experiences and exclusivity and superiority. So think about when you want to go on vacation, what do you look for uh, in your tourist experiences and what is the first thing you look at on the internet, images or text? So uh, now we'll move on to uh, the tools and the methods I implemented to carry out my work, um, my research. So. Uh, the corpus design is the following, so I collected six months of Instagram posts through API and of these travel, travel boards and uh, uh, web scraped and web crawled uh, the websites of through tower agency via previous consent, of course, for non-commercial purposes. And as you can see here, the corpora are, are more or less balanced. And I would like to draw your attention to the number of images that I uh, annotated manually, so 1,002. This is the research design of my thesis and dissertation, so my look pretty much complex, but I think it, it was needed to tackle this kind of social uh, semiotic phenomenon. So I adopted mixed method, a mixed methodological approach. Uh, I therefore uh, analyzed language uh, both quantitatively and qualitatively, and then imagery quantitatively and qualitatively, and then I combined the, uh, the results. Uh, the tools you see here on the right are the ones who I'm going to um, present now. So the uh, multimodal comparative table is the theoretical tool I drafted in order to analyze how the three layers of meaning, ideational, interpersonal, textual, so verbs, processes, 
adjectives, shots, angle, and overall code positions are constructed at the level of language, at the level of images, and across digital media, so websites and Instagram. On the right, you see different labels, which, is, uh, which are part of the adapted tagging system that I developed, uh, data-driven. So what I did was uh, I tested the theory, building on uh, the grammar, visual design, tourism discourse, and professional photography. And I tested it by creating different versions of my tagging system. And when I felt I was um, able to tag all the, we could say, distinctions in images, I also conducted uh, an uh, intern notator agreement um, and other statistics, including descriptive, uh, chi-square, PCA, and uh, CA factor analysis. Uh, another contribution of my work is the development of this software uh, in collaboration with the uh, International Council, Council of Research in Italy. I'm not a computer scientist, so I didn't develop it, but I designed it in collaboration with uh, these computer scientists. And what is, uh, we could say, novel about this, uh, this uh, software is that you can create customized uh, tagging and complex tagging system and annotate very large corpora of images. Uh, you can also conduct statistical, uh, statistical analysis and export data in a very transparent way with different variables organization to perform additional statistics in R or Python. Here you have an overview of how the software, the analysis is conducted. It was conducted on the left, the images, on the right, the tagging system. And uh, a couple of words on the intercode reliability. Me and my co-supervisor, Professor Bateman, spent weeks on this because my tagging system was quite complex and the thing, the thing is that I had a tree tagging system with different dependencies and plus I had, uh, the, uh, I offered, I had uh, both exclusive choices and non-exclusive choices for some parent nodes. So we adapted Cohen's Kappa and Klippendorf's Alpha for, uh, for each variable and uh, we, uh, these are the results uh, we obtained. So most of them uh, are above the threshold of reliability. Uh, the, these are part of the statistical uh, uh, analysis I conducted, so PCA and CA. You can see that the images and the tags cluster uh, differently according to the medium and contribute with different dimensions. So uh, we can also see on the correspondent analysis that the, the uh, co-patternings co of tags are different according to the, uh, social, the, sorry, the, the medium. The chi-square is provided here of the first metafunction, so the, uh, the spreading this, uh, of uh, the distribution of uh, events uh, and, uh, pro and the participants and settings. You can see here on the uh, Pearson's residual that for the presence of human beings, actions, reaction, and settings, in particular natural settings, there is a statistical significant correlation and uh, association, sorry, and after this statistical analysis, so I detected that uh, identified the, the existence of different patterns. So this uh, might me meant that there might be different social uses of the semiotic resources at hand. And uh, then I analyzed qualitatively, obviously, the material. Under investigation, what we can see here is that different expectations, different gazes at uh, the tourist experience are constructed depending on the medium of dissemination. So the Instagram, uh, Instagram favors the construction of the a romantic gaze at the tourist experience and uh, um, with an appeal to the extraordinary, so very idyllic and seemingly unnatural representation, artificial representations. But why does this work? Because uh, Instagram uh, users are more attracted to evocative um, settings and the representations, which we could say um, focus on the inner and the motive and passive consumption of uh, the tourist experience. So something more imaginary and uh, not real. And this is because obviously due to the sociological traits of the audience, which I will talk about later on as well. And uh, in line with the AIDA model of persuasion, so different, the two media um, I, are part of different steps in the purchasing process and the uh, intentionality process of the customer. Uh, in the journey towards, uh, again, purchase of uh, travel packages. 
And obviously, this uh, tourism discourse is always legitimated. I, it's a thing that I like to say, because tourism discourse is very powerful because it's based on capitalist ideology. And since we all work in our life, we will always need vacation. And this is the power of tourism discourse online. Uh, briefly moving to the last part of my presentation, the analysis of language corpora. So uh, very briefly, but I wanted to show it to you because appraisal as well is very interesting for people working in, on sentiment analysis. Um, so again, uh, the three metafunctions or layers of meaning creations uh, were analyzed at the linguistic level through transitivity and appraisal. And so what I did was I, I used sketch engine for post-tagging automatic post-tagging, but then the most frequent and most key, most key words, I uh, annotated them manually and analyzed them qualitatively through co patternings uh, and co-text. We can see here from the word list analysis that there, the, there seemed to be a difference between how the communication is constructed on Instagram and websites. So on uh, Instagram favors, they, uh, we could say, the frequent use of uh, construction of mental experiences related to perception, emotion, thought, whereas official websites are more focused on the provision of services, trip organization, because they, uh, they, like we could say, the step in the purchasing process is completely different, so at different stages. So we see see, know, gates, picture, watch to evoke imaginations and interest in a pervasive uh, uh, digital sphere with abundance of content and less time Whereas on the website, where is there more intentionality, we have more information, which is more concrete, that offers credibility, that constructs trust, uh, credibility, and convenience. So accessibility, use, support, uh, creation of travel packages for the user, for the customer. Uh, here we have the qualitative analysis, which I will not be able to present in detail, but let, let's look at concordance lines for an example. So you can see here in mental processes, how mental processes are realized. So they are more frequent on Instagram and they're also realized differently if we look at the keyword in context. So if you look at the first line, Australia's Northwest was made to be explored, wandered through the ancient lands before enjoying complete and utter coastal bliss. So very abstract and evocative and also evaluative. Whereas on the website, if you look, for example, at material processes, which are more frequent, we have more informative and concrete information. Visit the Fisheries uh, Museum of the Atlantic, um, or uh, what else in relational processes. This is the place uh, for uh, the perfect, no, sorry, uh, where was it? And after sundown, you'll see street cafes, bars and clubs. And so also the, the focus is on different aspects of the uh, tourist experience. Whereas we have visit this remote Arctic community, so it does not provide information at all. <laughs> um, the keyword analysis so confirmed this difference uh, at the semantic uh, categorization level. So we have evocative, em emotional, and imaginative lexis uh, with natural environments compared to more concrete uh, information about historical, cultural, and uh, artistic experiences. Finally, appraisal, very briefly, but we can talk about it in the Q&A if you're interested. Appraisal basically analyzes the exact types of emotions and evaluations of uh, communication of discourse. So by relying on, for example, let me show here, different uh, 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 resources, uh, lexical, but also adjectives as well, so nouns and adjectives, it analyzes the uh, type of uh, uh, evaluation conveyed and what is the expected reaction. And here we have an overview of my main results. You, we could mainly say, briefly say that the focus is on reaction and, and satisfaction, so the provision of an instant gratification, um, whereas on the website we have more uh, focus on quantification strategies as well, so the provision of different types of activities and uh, um, they focus again on different uh, uh, aspects, so like picturesque, secluded versus or gorgeous, dramatic, spectacular versus uh, great, ancient, and also numbers, which are not reported here. So the aim is creating emotional attachment versus conferring credibility and convenience. So different customer journeys, different tourist gates, 
This is the table I uh, drafted, which summarizes what I've been saying so far. And this is the customer journey, which I won't repeat again, but maybe I can leave it here uh, for the Q&A, uh, which uh, we could say again is the guide through the uh, Instagram, uh, sorry, the social user journey from social media to the website and the purchase of the tourist experience. So as conclusion, the two hypotheses were answered. There is an intentional design, systematic construction of social economic practices and tourism, and they differ according to the, they differ according to the medium. Uh, thank you so much for your attention, and I'm here to answer your questions if there are any.